All right, so I want to talk about ball screws. Um, I have converted my mill to use ball screws instead of lead screws. And I'm going to talk about the reasons why and why I think that ball screws are now uh, the best option for a hobbyist. Uh, when I originally built my mill, I used lead screws. There were a few reasons, but the main reason was that they were cheap. They were very available because these 8mm lead screws are used on 3D printers. Ball screws at the time were pretty expensive and uh, sometimes hard to find good ones that didn't have backlash or other issues. So the way I used the lead screws on the original machine was, uh, as you can see here, I've got these linear rails. The lead screws are mounted on these, these bearing mounts, which I'll talk about more in a little bit. The lead screws themselves are inexpensive. They usually come with couplers. And the anti-backlash nut block um, I use is made out of Delrin, which you can buy from open builds. Um, I eventually made myself some nuts that have different heights, although the complication there is that you have to get a tap, a special tap for the lead screw, which is kind of hard to find. And uh, ball screws are still more expensive, um, but they do come with the bearing housing blocks. They come with uh, everything else you need to mount them. Uh, and they're already machined down to preset lengths usually. So let's talk about the different pros and cons. For the lead screws, the bearings and, and supports you use uh, have to sort of be your own solution. I used some bearings that came with the, with the lead screws at first with some flange mounts, and then I made blocks that those go into. The problem with these is that they just don't last for very long. I had trouble uh, making these couple well to the lead screw, and I found they often loosened up and caused backlash. So I upgraded to uh, a different set of bearings. Um, this is a, a nice angular contact dual bearing, but I had to make an even more precise block for it, and then I had to get creative with how to fix the lead screw to it in a way that was going to stick. And you compare this to the, uh, the the ball screws that come with the bearing blocks, all of the fixing methods, all of the end machining, actually much easier to use. It, everything fits perfectly. There's there's no manual work for these, which is very nice. You just have to you know drill the holes for uh, and tap the holes for where you're going to mount the blocks, and that's it. Much easier. Okay, let's talk about backlash a little bit. On a lead screw, um, you have to use some kind of anti-backlash nut. And the ones that I used, um, like I mentioned, open builds make some, you can make your own. Uh, the Delrin itself uses um, some springiness of the material plus a screw that pushes it and takes up the backlash. It works pretty well. Uh, the Delrin wears well. They last for a long time. I was generally pretty happy with those, with those nuts. For a, a ball screw system, it's a little more complicated. There are a few different methods for combating uh, backlash. You can get dual nuts that then have like some kind of spacer in between. In my opinion, the best option for reducing backlash with, uh, with ball screws for the types of applications that you use in, a, in a, a hobbyist mill is probably just to have oversized balls because those are easy to, to manufacture. Over time, it will wear, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to take long enough that I don't think it's a factor for most hobbyists. Another interesting trade-off is uh, back driving. Um, which is sort of also related to the efficiency of the system, is all also related to the lead of the system. The lead is the amount that the nut will move per rotation of the screw. And you can have um, multiple start ball screws or lead screws, and that just means that uh, the pitch can be finer, but the lead is, is, is going to be larger, depending on the number of starts are shown here. This is true for ball screws and lead screws. The types of cheap um, lead screws I, were using, I was using were four start and they had a, an 8 millimeter lead. So every rotation of the lead screw, the nut would move by 8 millimeters. You can get ball screws in different leads. Um, the common configuration I used for the 1204, the 12 millimeter diameter, 4 millimeter lead. So it's about half the lead compared to the lead screw uh, that I was using. Uh, this is important because uh, for an axis, you don't want to be able to back drive it easily. Or at least if you if you make it so the the axis doesn't self back drive easily, then you don't have to have as much holding torque at the motor. So for example, if you imagine the x axis, if I'm trying to push it with my hand, that's back driving it, and the cutting forces are going to do that. So it can actually be um, easier to use smaller motors, which is is useful for a hobby mill if it's hard to back drive. And so this is something I was worried about, and one of the reasons I originally chose to use a lead screw is that I knew the lead screws had uh, a, a lot of resistance to back drive. And part of the reason is because they're pretty low efficiency. There's so much contact friction that they're going to uh, be hard to, to back drive. 
But in practice, I've actually found that this isn't a big issue. I switch to the ball screws. The, the lead is half of what it is. And surprisingly, the back drive difficulty is about the same. I was expecting it to be a much larger difference, and it really wasn't. Uh, another interesting difference to consider is the height of the system, because with the lead screws, the nuts can be pretty thin. And of course, the ones I re uh, the lead screws I was using were only uh, eight millimeters uh, anyway. So the ball screws that you get, the smallest that's commonly available uh, for hobbyists, 12 millimeter diameter is going to be larger. And then also because the balls recirculate uh, around the nut, the nut actually has to be fairly large as well which means that um, you have to do something about the height difference between the linear bearings and the nut. And for, for lead screws, you don't really have to do that um, because you can uh, it's thin enough that you can, uh, with 15 millimeter commonly available uh, linear bearings, um, the height is plenty. And so for me, what I ended up doing was milling out um, a pocket underneath the, uh, the moving axes to make clearance for the nut. You could have also done this differently uh, if you don't have a mill already by just adding spacers on top of the linear bearing blocks, but then you're making the axis higher and you're potentially creating more of a lever arm for, for forces against the linear bearings. So I was trying to keep it compact. And uh, in this case, because my mill was torn apart while I was doing this, I actually used a CNC router to route out the, uh, the center portion. This router build I don't have um, a video about yet because it's not very good. I'm, I'm not happy with how this router turned out, or at least it's, it's pretty mediocre. Uh, I might make a, a video on it later, but I don't think I have much to add. Uh, another factor to consider is that with lead screws, especially those eight millimeter lead screws that are, that are pretty bendy, <laughs> uh, the, um, the alignment uh, is more forgiving. Uh, when I, especially when I was using those flange mount bearings, those have a lot of adjustability built in. Um, so alignment is not critical. The system can compensate. Ball screws, I know the, the, bearing, the bearings fit a lot tighter. The diameter of the ball screws wider that I got, so it's going to uh, be more rigid. So uh, alignment becomes more important. And so uh, what I've done previously with those, with those lead screws is I've sometimes needed to add shims just because of the surface uh, that I was mounting them to is not perfectly flat. This time, um, I actually looked at getting some precision ground aluminum stock to work from, uh, and it actually uh, was not that expensive. Um, it wasn't much of a price premium for offcuts of this versus offcuts of uh, you know non precision. Uh, so the using using a very flat mounting surface helped. Another thing that helped is uh, I changed the way that I mounted the stepper motors, and I made this this mount. It's a little bit confusing to see, uh, but at the top right here. Where those slots are, those are actually uh, what get bolted down. I'll show another image here. There you go. So that's clear. So the stepper motor goes in, the bottom gets bolted on, and those slots are wide enough. They have enough give that I can actually have uh, quite a bit of uh, freedom of movement uh, to realign things if they're not quite perfect. All right. So that's the the list of trade offs. Based on all those trade offs, I think uh, I think ball screws are the way to go. Just from the beginning, um, you can use spacers initially to comp compensate for the height. You don't have to make bearing blocks or do anything weird there. You can always come back and, uh, and mill out pockets for the nuts later. And overall, uh, I think it's just easier to get uh, a better result initially with ball screws. They also have come down in price. They're going to continue to come down in price. Just be a little careful with where you buy them from and make sure that they have some anti-backlash mechanism built in. That's the end of the video. I'll show a little bit of footage here of it cutting. It was um, definitely a little bit better after the upgrade, but not a huge difference. The main thing that I appreciate with, was that I'm not going to have to fiddle with those bearing blocks anymore. I'm not going to have to worry about the lead screws starting to, to slip. And so I think overall this is going to be much lower maintenance than what I had before.